Before I do anything, first thing I want to do is pop this up, go to here. Uh, there we go. That's the one I want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I want to do one last thing. Configure SD plus. I know what it was. I swapped my demo mode key trying to show Dan how to do something. Ah, la, 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 la. All right, here we go. Live demo mode. Put it back. No. Oh, just delete Dan. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. You've been deleted. All right, there we go. Now I can. Gangster. All right, now we can go. Now we can go. All right, you guys are all up in here. I see everyone's getting ready. Uh, let's see. I know, right, Paul? Man, I've been up since four. I don't know why I just woke up. Anyway, let's dive in. So, uh, as you can see, this is just my first setup i'm gonna hire all of these windows for a splits so that way all you people who like to use the o word you don't have to be o you can just come in this is my first scene it's just me <laughs> okay so um the best way to think of this again is if you use your profiles think of them as individual houses and then think of your scenes as individual rooms in said house and then think of your overlays as the furnitures in said house so in this particular ecamm live house i have the intro scene which you just heard 
And then I have this scene, which is just me. I am using a camera overlay instead of the stock camera because this one is unscalable. As I move the mouse, nothing happens. I never use the stock camera. It's just not me. I go to blank. And then I have a camera here from camera overlay. And this one is scalable. And so normally what I do is scale it. You know, you can just come in here. I kind of use this box as a reference. There's a little bitty box in there. And then I use my centering to center it. And then I reach into my fancy bag of tricks, which is all of my Ecamm assets, and I pull up a background. So think of this as a carpet. I'm going to put this in a place inside here that says show in background. If I put it in show in the current scene, it's only going to be in this scene. It works, right? But if I were to create a new scene down here on the bottom, there's a little plus sign, create a new scene. If I were to create a new scene, I get black. Right. However, we go back to here and then zoom in and move that background to show in the background. Now, when I create a new scene, I get purple. You know what I mean? All right, cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to bless this up just a wee bit. So I'm going to hit the little pencil right here on the side and then back out a little second. This is my camera A, which is technic technically the game capture HD60X, but I'm using it as camera A. I prefer to use the letters because these switch around when Mac OS updates or there's a blackout or something of that nature. So it's best to use your placeholder cameras. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, using the current shape of the camera is wide. You'll see more of that in a second. And I have my border. My border is already selected to my colors. So all I got to do is take my little border and I know my numbers. Just once you make a decision on numbers, use them. Like then you don't have to fight, right? You just know what it is every single time, right? All right. So now when I dip out, you'll see I got a nice cool box, slightly curved edges. And that's from using the border and the corner radius, right? Now we in beta right now have some fancy things which will allow you to do things with your border, like put a gradient or put a motion. I'm happy it's there. I don't use that kind of stuff. It doesn't make your content any better. <laughs> it just makes you look like you like fancy things moving. Okay, I wasn't going to say what I was really going to say. <laughs> you guys know what it is. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just my normal self. Um, I'm norm. I'm like, eh, I can't even speak English today. It's, um, it's tired. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to get here and check here and you'll see that if you look at my audio meter, I am hitting my norms. So it is set how it's normally set. I take it back. It is down more than normal, but now it is how it's normally set. So you guys should be fine. If it's not, I wait for the second person. <laughs> yeah, okay. Paul said as fine as is him. So that's another thing you guys hear me say all the time. Make sure you wait for more than one person to tell you the audio because you'll make adjustments for nothing. It was off by 2 dB, but I fixed it. And this is how it should be. You should not be blasting out the opposite end. If you're blasting out the opposite end, you're screwing it up. Okay, so um, now we got that. Let's go over to the next one. And we're going to show you back to my new scene. So same thing as before. I'm going to put on camera. And in which case, just drag it in. And it's cool because it remembers the settings that you had the last time. So we just press here. This time I'm going to go squircle. I like this shape here. And I like to make it a wee bit smaller. I use the edge of this um, interface thing to try to guesstimate squircle sizes. So I like to bring this one right under the edge of the camera. And then I know that it's lined up a little bit. Then you just slide until you find that line. That's the line I'm looking for. Holding down the option key, right? Oh, let me turn on my keyboard so you guys can see what I'm doing, All right? When I hold down the option key, 
the little blue thing over here will pop up to let you know it's being pressed. Ooh, further. Let's go further. Right. So whenever I'm pressing keys, you'll see them pop on here. So you don't have to ask what key did you press. You'll see it. All right, cool. So now hold down the option key. Move out of the way. <laughs> I can grab this and slide straight across. And you see I get another copy. Boom. So now let's drop in the second camera. And what's really cool about the way um, Ecamm works is once you have the box there, you can literally drag in any camera from your list and make the change. You can also press over here and select which camera you want. Normally I use camera F as guest one because a friend. <laughs> That's just how I do it. You can do you. All right, so now we're gonna get into putting the text and all of the above things on there. <laughs> This is always the case. And what's really strange, Paul, sometimes you can, um, your mouse will click on it and it holds the mouse press. And then as you move the mouse back and forth, it will change the volume on YouTube and you won't even know it. So you'll go to move the mouse out of the interface to go to the next video or change pages or something and you will actually bump your volume back. So yeah. Um, you can use your keyboard shortcuts to put it back to top though. Anyway, so now we're going to get into here and let me hit the text box. Boom. And we're just going to type in our lower third. All right. Boom. Now you guys... If you've seen this a couple thousand times, you know what I do, right? I leave one at the one number, and then I come down and dip the second one to one step lower. It's a long conversation as to why that works, but mathematically, fonts tend to like multiples of eight. Well, most good fonts. Weird fonts, I can't, it's hard to say because they don't always follow the rules, but most good fonts tend to like multiples of eights. It's a mathematical equation having to do with 12 column, never mind. It's long, long <laughs> conversations about graphic design, which will probably melt half of the people in the room. So we won't talk about it. So um, I'm gonna go there. And then I like to slightly embiggen. I just, you know, dress it up a taste, you know, just to give it a little something, something, boom. Okay, so the other thing that you can do in here, as many people who've watched the demo before have seen, I can pick on my text color and I can make longs a part of your day by brightening that up a bit. And let's do this one. Right, let's do that one. So yes, you can give your, your lower third a little sauce. All right, so now we're gonna size this bad boy. What's up, Andy? I like the size of the round box chair. There's no math or reason. I just pick what visually looks good based on years of doing skilly skills. Um, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, but there's definitely horrible and good. <laughs> I won't say there's a right or wrong answer, but there's definitely horrible and good. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to pull my corner back just a smidge. There we go. All right, so to bring over the next in, I'm going to actually pop in my logo. There it is. Just drag it in. Now, when you're inserting graphics like such, you can absolutely come over here to the overlay window and use these buttons down here. Uh, this is a new image overlay, which is bringing a picture new animated overlay, which is bringing the animation, uh, screen share overlay to bring in the screen share, text overlay to bring in the dynamic text. This you might not have because I'm in beta. Uh, same with the shape overlay, also that's in beta. Uh, so yours will probably see countdown. If you're not using beta, then you'll see widget, then you'll see camera overlay, and then you'll see folders or groups, right? So you can absolutely come over here and 
press this button, wait for the box to come up, hunt through your folders, and look for your graphic, and blah. That works. That totally works. I don't do that. We're Mac people. So uh, let me get rid of those two. Booyaka. As any self-respected Mac person is you drag and drop. See? So much faster. So I'd never sit there and press the buttons to go get all of those things. It just takes too long. So you do you. Whatever works for your brain. Uh, but the faster you learn shortcut keys and dragging and dropping, the quicker you get good at computers. You can use the arrow key to nudge it down just a smidgen. I'm going to make it just a wee bit smaller, right? Right, Andy? Drag and drop is life. Most people would be surprised at how much dope stuff you can do with drag and drop. They just never try. I assume the people that don't do the just test to see if it works drag and drop must come from the Windows environment because Mac people, that's been our steez since 1984. All right, cool. So we got it like that. And then we got our guest. We're ready to throw our guest on there. Now, before we take it one step further, let's zoom in over Chia and come down here and add a new folder. So I'm going to pop in that. I'm going to pop in that. I'm going to put Paul back on top. And then I'm going to pop in the camera. What this does, it allows me to make this group. And lock them together so they will behave as a single action. So then I can twirl that close and pop in another group. Let me back out just a smidge. Woo! Pop the molly, I'm sweat. Pop this group up. Sometimes you, when you add a folder, it will nest inside the other folder, which drives me batty, but it's up to you. I don't like it when it's nested. Ah! Bad titling. Bam. All right, so now we're going to take the F camera and pop it into that group because that this camera on the other side belongs to this group. So now you guys will see the type of cool trickery we can do. Um, I'm going to dip out, but just kind of be cognizant of what I'm doing over here. If I were to pick this up and try to move it, it moves the whole shooting match, right? So in theory, what I could do is delete this whole coho setup here, use my option key, and just drag it across, and I have a duplicate copy, in which case I can come now to the copy and name it co-host. Right. Then dip back out and I could eliminate the little E. Poyaka and then bring in a different logo. Drag and drop. Pop it in the spot. Unembiggen it accordingly. Gangster. And then now I can edit this text. Right now we're good to go. So now we have the second one. And then in this case, if I come back to here, all I have to do is drop in the logo and then they're all the same. So now the co-host and the host are in proper folders. They are all stuck together. If I try to move this one around, she go, you know what I mean? Use the undo key to put it back, drop it to camera F. And now we are gravy. So there's your scene. Now, before we step, one step further, I want to show you something cool. This is something I think I forgot to mention the last couple of weeks, but I want to remind you. How do I know or remember all of the settings for all the things that I'm going to do? I make a scene and I write it down. <laughs> so all the cover colors are there. And going back to um, 
the comment from Somcast, reset audio levels to 80. Because if you mess with it, you want it to be to 80. Uh, it's it's a thing. I've been teaching that for, I don't know, three years now. You always want it at 80. Why? Because you have room to grow up. If you start with your level already out here, and then somebody says go louder, you got no place to go. So you always start with your levels at 80, and you set your mixer accordingly. My compressor is screaming, so although this isn't punching through to the yellow, it is ready, so if I were to go, ha, ha real last, it, it won't punch through because the compressor is keeping it gangster, right? So it's designed on purpose to be this way. And contrary to popular belief, uh, 40 years of audio engineering says, I know what my level's supposed to be. <laughs> Just say it. Just throwing it out there. All right, cool. So you put your, uh, I have my font set up. I know what it is, right? I have my small font, what it is. Remember, I did the 64 and the 48. I got my cameras listed, so I know which camera is which. Um, if I wanted to, I could come in here and add an additional line for the guest camera, right? Uh, like such, because, you know, each each time you do your show, you're going to change it a little bit, right? But the reason why this is cool is it allows you to quickly get back to what you had. Um, all the Beatles, get back, get back, get back to where you once belonged, <laughs> right? Grab these two, pull it down just a widget. So by having, oi, don't do that. <laughs> by having this, you know, somewhere in a scene, you could just kind of easily remember what all your settings are and you can get back to them real quick. And you never have to find yourself trying to guess or remember what font you're using, what color you're using or anything like that. So I make a scene that's called mechanicals and I keep all of this stuff here, right? Um, so for like Luis or Paul, got to remember to turn on Chris. Or you might want to say, remember to turn off the Wi-Fi or turn off the light or turn on the on-air sign. Like, you can literally build yourself a checklist scene, hide it in a folder called Mechanicals, as I have down here. And then you can name it whatever you want. <laughs> and that way, when you go to do your show, you always know where everything is. Boom. James is coming in as his alter ego today, making me forget that it's james hey james <laughs> all right cool so everybody's good here so we got those ah now now here comes the next lesson what the heck did i just do all right i didn't do that that was just weird That's super. Okay, well, welcome to um, doing weird stuff with the beta. I don't know how, but I, I literally just threw that scene away. But that's okay. I can make it again super quick because I know what I'm doing. So let's throw this one away because that somehow duplicated itself. And uh, we'll just go to the next one. We don't need to see that anymore. Let me go to make the next one. So I'm going to pop on the camera real quick. Adjusted to about the size that I wish, right? We're going to call it that. And then I'm going to show you the next move is to bring in an animated overlay. So, again, you can press the button or you can just drag in an animated overlay. So, let's drop this in. So, there's my animated overlay. Um, I legit just made that in Final Cut Pro. Sound, everything. You have to do some conversion for the sound in order to make the sound work in Ecamm. Um, it's actually a very simple process. We have videos about how to do that, but if you wish, you can easily do. It's not that hard. Um, you can make them in Canva. You can make them in Final Cut. You can make them in Motion, uh, Adobe Express, like anything that's cool. You can make uh, animated animates in there like such. Um, boom. That's why I make them originally, Andy, 
is that if I'm doing a scene build up for somebody else, like uh, when I designed the flow and I sent it to Luis, I sent all of the mechanicals in like instructions. I even put the instructions in the folder um, because in Mac OS, you can name elements or, you know, when you buy a program and it has the fancy looking folder. Yeah, I made a folder similar to that and sent it to Luis. So that way he can just put all of the things in there. All right, let me show you another one. Let's drag in this. When you first drag it in, depending on if you drop it in the scene, like um, I dragged it and I dropped it here in the middle. So you get this warning. Add an animated overlay. Do you want to add this file as an animated overlay? Animated overlays do not include audio. Kind of. Uh, add animated overlay. Boom. Or full screen with audio. So I did it as animated audio. And then you are not hear nothing, right? No sound, right? And that's because that's just a standard MOV file. Uh, against my better judgment, I'll put this on my desktop. I don't like files on my desktop. I'm weird. <laughs> um, there you go. See, that's just an MOV file, right? So let's put that back to whence it had come. And then you'll see I have a same similar file that is listed as a VP9. Now, same exact file. Convert it to WebM and then drop it in. Boom, you get noise. So that's what I mean. You know what I mean? If you convert it to a WebM, you can get all of the fancy fied sounds and whatnot. All right. Moving right along, moving right along. The other thing that works cool is. If you have movies that you download and you want to play, if I were to drag in this particular movie right here, you'll see again, MP4. If I pick it up and drop it in, it takes over, it switches Ecamm to the movie version. And then, you know, you can start from the beginning, start from the last point. You can, when the video finished, do nothing, loop go back to the next scene or uh, in the broadcast, you can adjust the volume for the movie up in chair, but it takes over the whole thing because you dragged it in as a full movie. Hello, Ian Nancy Gray here. I have been using Ecamm Live since. Okay, so, bye Ian. Let's <laughs> put this back. If you drag in the same movie and you actually put it in the overlay section over here, right under Andy, you get the warning because it wants to know if you want to do it. So if you say add an animated overlay, wait, let me get rid of that one. I don't want that one anymore. You'll see, you can't hear Ian. Like, he, he just there. You can't hear him. Don't tell him I said that's a good thing. I'm joking, Ian. But I have a similar copy of that. Watch me grab the wrong one. And it's a WebM version, as you can see underneath my mousey. If I drop it in Chia. Hey, everyone. It's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send some special... Shelly is not Ian. Let me grab this one. Hello, Ian Nancy Gray here. I have been using Ecamm Live. And now, because it's converted to a WebM, that file I dropped in... Notice again, says WebM right there under. Hey everyone, it's Shelly from Shelly Saves the Day. I want to send. So most people don't want to do the work to convert their stuff to WebM, which first of all, A, isn't work because Shutter Encoder just does it super quick. But if you do, you can do way cooler stuff with your animated movie type overlay. So for instance, I could have both of these guys on the screen and then I can be like, uh, let's see. Boom, right? So I can put that there and then I can unembiggen this. Right, and let's put it right chair on the beginning it a wee bit more. And then I can pull this down to here. All 
actually, I forget if Ian is uh, A or E, but he don't don't worry. He won't <laughs> he won't be too sad. All right, uh, let me do this edit one more time. I want to make it more cool. All right, so because I might spell the E N or the O N or the A Y or the E Y wrong, I don't want to get in trouble. So I'll just make it cool. So that way he's excited no matter what. All right, so I'll pop that. And then. Bam, right? So I'm doing my thing. I'm talking to people about, you know, becoming an uh, ECAM affiliate. I want to make sure that people don't miss the training. So I got a little graphic over here, you know, discussing what we discussing, right? And then I'll say, well, let's hear first from... Since it came out just about, I bought my first Mac. I You know what I mean? And then now we'll hear from Shelly. So send some special love when you do it with the full screen movie, especially on something that talking head that doesn't need all of that. It's just, eh, this, yeah, it's not as cool. This is more easy, more fun, more things you can do it. 100% Michael, if I'm going to do a presentation where I have to add a bunch of videos, I'm going to convert them all first because what Michael is saying is, uh, it will really make the file smaller. They will look just as dope. They'll be smaller and Everything will flow like a heavyweight champion. So there you go. That's your animated overlay game. Let's go to one more new scene. Boom. Watch this. Hello. Hey, hey everyone. Right it's Shelly from have been Shelly using Saves Live since it do, came do out. Yourself, <laughs> do yourself a favor. Make sure you turn off autoplay because that would mess this scene up. And then you might want to do start from last location if you're bouncing back and forth, right? So, for instance, uh, if I were to jump here and jump back, they're in the same position. Ian is on that stuck face, right? Just about. I bought my first Mac. And then we'll leave him on that stuck face. And then when we come back, he's still on the same stuck face. So that's another reason why you should set it. So if you need it, I mean, it depends. Some of your stuff, you're going to want them to play every time. Some of the stuff you're only going to want to play if you press it. So remember to use those settings as in, uh, in accordingly. So let me grab this. I'm going to uh, copy this, pop over to the new scene, click in here and then press paste. It puts it in the exact same location. So I like that feature. Let me hit screen share over let. So we're going to pop that up there. We're going to embiggen it accordingly. And then let's screen share. Let me open up. Oh, that's not what you type. Keynote. Zoom. Mm, mm, mm. The eye of the tiger. Oh man, I want you to go away. Hey, go away. Why? Why he doesn't want to go to the trash? Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to open up the screen I think this is the right one okay so what I'm going to do is let me actually bring this keynote window into the middle so here's the presentation before you press play to get ready to do your presentate, make sure you go up to the top in the keynote window and do the play thing and make sure it says play in a window, not play full screen, in a window. That is key. Okay, so when I press play, <clears throat> oh, I drank all my water, bummers. 
when I press play, you get a nice clean thing, no interface. But check this out. If I were to open out my speaker notes, which I don't really use, but if you need a speaker notes, you can have them there. This is unaffected. So what I'm going to do is just move this off to the other screen, right? But in Ecamm, I'm going to press Keynote and then the name of the presentation, and then you get it in a nice little screen. Now, some people are going to be picky and want to have it cropped all the way in. You can do that. You can just do one of these and then pull it tight and like that. I'm holding on the option key in order to crop the window. So now it's cropped properly. And then, boom, boom, boom. This, that is my number one reason why I would love to have magnetic numbers for the sizing of the windows, because then I can make it perfect. Because I'm sure if I sat here and stare at this long enough, I can be tweaked out. Napule, Johnny, Napule. Okay, so now I'm in my prezo. I can click through it. Everything is everything. You know, can back it up, right? And it looks good, right? So, ooh, see, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that if I checked it real good, oy, I hate when that happens. That is a irritating feature of Mac OS. You have to click Ecamm proper first and then do that and it will disappear. All right, now, see, I knew I would sit here and want to tweak over making it perfect, but don't do that. Oh, man, the pop line is catching me. There we go. There we go. All right, so what you see here is the same thing you see here. Again, if I'm clicking through, it all works. You can be even in Ecamm and use your buttons depending on how you have your thing set up. I often do this when I'm doing a, a situation where I'm doing a presentation. I have my little Logitech remote. It's in the drawer over here, and I can just plug it in and go to town. So, again, this is completely independent. Nobody's seeing this, so you can move this to a different screen, and that is how you do your little keynote thing, like, real cool, like, you know what I mean? Super simps. Super simple. Same exact thing if you were trying to do Zoom. Uh, this is going to be bad. But if you're doing Zoom, give it a second to think. And then I was to have a meeting. I got to change my camera because Zoom is going to think it's Ecamm right now. Okay. Okay. So if I were trying to bring in a person in Zoom and I did the hide self view, let me move this out the way. All you would do is click here, go to Zoom, and then... There it is. So if somebody was in the meeting there, they would just show up like that. And of course, being Zoom, you could crop out all of the interface stuff that you don't want to see just by holding the option key, right? And then put it over there. And then that would just work. You know what I mean? So this is all the same stuff you see in Zoom, but not. So it will work with anything. Oh, my God, Shelly, it is super funny that you're here. <laughs> because, hi. Hey, I want to send some special love out to my Ecamm fam. We love you too, Shelly. <laughs> she pops up after. See, that's why you can't type her name on the screen. Because she will just pop up like, like uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> you got to say Shelly saves the day three times. And then, bye-bye, there's Shelly. <laughs> Super awesome. Okay, so th this was um, where we when you set up your screen share, you just need to remember to um, put that on. Now, I want to show you guys another cool thing about screen share. This was a Zoom meeting. Well, 86 that. This 
here is amazing. One of my favorites, still trying to get people to learn to do this, but folks is hard headed, but here we go. So here is a googly box. First thing I do is I use a, a thing to make it automatically go to 1920 by 1080. And then let's do this. Um, some coffee we'll go to the site all right i want you to watch how i do this i'm just going to grab this and drag it to ecamm there that simple 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 okay and then now at the bottom of the interface there's a little finger if you turn it blue now this page is active this is no different than me using this Chrome window. So now I can actually interact with this page. Right? So I need some more coffee. And you guys think I'm joking. I'm going to actually shop live. The one that I like, this stuff is good, by the way. I do like the Burundi, but I like the Brazil. So... We're going to add some of that to the cart, right? Let's get us a 12 ounce bag, add it to the cart. Boom. Nope. Let's go back. Check it out. There's a back button down here on the bottom. So I can go back and there's this really good specialty joint that they might be out of, which is going to be make me cry because it's so good. Ah, they're out. Bummers. So I'll get the Brazil. I did that. Uh, let's see. I'll get the Papa Bear. That was also good. What is up, Kirk Nugget? All right, add to cart. So you see, I mean, like, you can just come in and just drag. So another common question. Let's duplicate this scene real quick. Let me hit the duplicate button. I'm going to 86 my shopping cart. Another common question is, I want to play a video, and I want to do this. I want to do that, whatever. All right, so listen. We're just going to go here, and then we're going to go here. Oh, that does not work. That is not, Oh, it worked. <laughs> oh, my God. YouTube knows what I call Kirk. <laughs> I don't know how it knows what I call Kirk, but it knows what I call Kirk. Ah, dude, this is funny. Okay, so. I'm going to grab this video. I legit just made this exact same video, like what I'm traveling with. So I'm going to hit this. And I'm not, look, you can come over here and click all of these things and copy this. And, and man, ain't nobody got time for that. Just grab this, drag it in. Boom. Curtain nugget in the building. Right? So all you got to do, and big it to how you like it. Right? Uh, again, right now, I'm just moving the window. Until you come to the bottom down here again, pop on the fingy, tell TV to go away, tell Kurt to hiss his mouth just for a second, then you back up, and without having to do all kind of crazy things, all kind of work, look, I can hit full screen, I get all full screen of the Jamaican, and then press play now. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is the easiest way. Is a monitor. I yeah, I have a monitor too. You use the same one I use? I highlighted in the carousel. I cannot show it to you yet, but I'll show it to you a little later when- um, Man, when we what kind of trash is telling me you can't show me? I'm joking. <laughs> ah! But you said what I'm saying? Like I could jump all around Kirk video. I can come to here. Like, I just want to see like what he's showing or what he's talking about. I can computer. You know, so you're going to get a much more consistent setup, sort of see what he's doing. Right. Again, look, this is a live YouTube window. So I can back out of here and see what people were saying in the comments. Right. I could even come down here and click on add a comment, but I got to log in. Right. But if I log in to my YouTube page real quick, then it would just work. Like I could legit just leave a comment. So let me do something to cheat code right here. I'll show you guys for a split second. Look, if I hit preview mode, 
you guys are seeing this window right here, right? So I can go back to here. You, nobody on the internet would see what I'm doing in the back. So I could go here and then sign in and then put in my info, but you guys want to be able to see this. So what I'm going to do is dip out of demo mode real quick so I can do that. <clears throat> Man, what happened to my demo mode button? I don't know why I keep moving, but we about to fight. So now all you guys can see is my face while I come over here and actually log in and, you know, use the secret sauce, put in the info, my really long and complicated password. There's none of y'all business. <laughs> Boom. I told you I'm password long. That's how it got to be, though. All right, boom. And then I want to add my two-factor authentication because it's asking for my iPad, which is upstairs. So now I'm logged in. I can go publish. Y'all can see what I'm doing. And then I'll select on my channel. And then now I'm logged in. So now if I press the little finger button, scroll down here in the bottom, I can be like. Leave a comment. Boom. So I mean, it's a real deal web page, right? So I don't know why everybody always like to be, you know, I don't know. Let me explain it again. <laughs> Let me duplicate this seat. All right, so here's the other way to do it. The other way to do it is hit full screen, screen share, and then click over here, and then go to Google Chrome, and then now you're there, now you gotta figure out what to do with you, and then you you have to move back and forth. So now I gotta come to the page to do stuff, then I gotta come back to eCamera and do stuff, and come back to the page and do stuff, and then come back, yeah, 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 anybody got time for that? Anybody got time for that? The other option, is to hit the screen share window here and press this and then go down here, find Google Chrome, right? And then come put it up here and big in it as needed. Same problem. If I wanna do something, I gotta come back over here to Chrome. I gotta interact with Kurt, like jump over to this little time frame here. Then I gotta come back to Ecamm. Then I gotta jump back over to Chrome to get to this. And then and, and anybody got time for that? I'm just saying. So my other way, the other other way, is just drag the URL, let it loose, and bigging it accordingly. And then once you turn on the finger, it's live. Boom. Tough acting <laughs> to neck. Man, what the heck I'm kind of hold on, hold on, hold on. What kind well, of computer like, stand is that, Kurt? I mean, talk to me in the comments. What do you do to the ZVE? Right. Look, even the keystrokes you know, work. So I can actually This up. dude got his computer standing on a freaking bowl. Oh, he's in the telly. I got it. Okay. You, you, you're less fired than I thought. I thought you was going full hood rat with that. That is amazing, Kurt. That is amazing. <laughs> so, yes, that is a, a much fancier way of widgetating. You could even do something cool like this. Let me think of... Um, some good ones nah I forgot what it was called here we go we go to seconds pro and then create an online timer wait I had to make sure I'm back in demo mode there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do online timer and let's do a hit timer. Boom. All right, so there's gonna be my hit timer. I got six sets, high intensity. 
30 seconds. We'll stick with green, red. We'll just leave all of this stuff, whatever. And say, create the timer. Okay. So here is my hit timer. Here is the link. Highlight the link. Let me go to the scene that I want to go to first. Let's, let's, I've hey, got multiple cameras. cameras. All right. So look, I got the scene right here. I'm going to just drag it in. Oh, it's not going to work. Let me uh, do this. Copy it. Go here. Hit that page. Bam. Now I'm dragging in. Okay. So what you can do now is intervalate, right? And you can crop this to your heart's contention. Or there's a button there that says view full screen. So hit view full screen. Boom. Turn off the finger. Put it where you need it to be. Right, and bigging it accordingly. Uh, and then look, hold the option key, crop that part out. The the crop on this one's a little bad, so you can click on the widget editor, hit edit widget, and let's give it some more height. This probably needs to be like 800. All right, what happens when you do full view full screen now? Yeah, now it crops properly. That was just a guess on the size. There was no magic involved. That was pure guessing from a long-term computer gangster. And now it works. Why Kurt always got to be asking for extra stuff? I thought we was friends. Damn, you feel better now? <laughs> yes. So yes, Kurt Nugget, you can gave it a border. Look at there. You turn off the finger. Look, now it's just working. So I you know, listen. Oh, wait. Hold on, Kurt. Let me go ahead and blow your mind one last time. Since we over here doing the craziness, you know what's coming, right? I don't even you know what's coming. Paul, Luis, tell Kurt what's coming. Oh, man, I want to do premium. Where is it at? Man, where's the duck race? Yo, they got people swimming. There it is. There's duck rays. All right. So I'm not going to do the setup part here because it takes too long. But basically, all you got to do, crop it in. Crop it in. Of course, the, the whole thing just moves on you, but that's what happens. Turn that part off, and then it shouldn't move. But it might. And then crop it in. Crop it. Oh, there's a the thing that says use the duck rays full screen. I didn't see that. My bad. But that should make it work. Anyway, so you guys get the drift. You could straight up race these ducks up in these streets just with a little simple action like such. And then now you can color commentate the duck race. Like, bam. Boom. <laughs> he said, I'm going to win sometime. All right, look. So I think Paul... I asked the question, set me up duck 29. Ah, oh, that's the bomb. That's the bomb. Yo, Paul said, can you gave the border motion? Okay, look, check this out. I'm going to make a fat border, and then I'm going to change this from color to motion. And then I'm going to pick uh, light blizzy and dark blizzy. 
boom. Now you got duck motion. The duck motion. Do do do. Duck duck. Do do do. It's your birthday. This is duck bird. This is duck bird. Sorry. <laughs> you guys know what happens. You guys know your man's got musical Tourette's. Why? Why? Why would you get me started on DuckTales? All right. You see what I mean, though? Like, you can get you can get snacky with it. You can get mad snacky with it. So, anybody has any ideas on how to do something cool, let the whole community know. Because I'm telling you, like, we are in a dip. We are in a whole new ball of wax e cam fam look i could even do something crazy like this grab this shape overlet right and let me take the corner off real quick take the shape overlet here and i am going to fill it with red okay then i'm going to put it right here right here and then embiggen it like such and then do a little side in bigging and then drop it beneath the wings. In, in, duck bird. <laughs> du, in, uh, uh. Look, come on, fam. Come on. Okay, come on. There you just make your little foldy. Throw in the old tangle tangle. Throw, you, we so dope you can get our styles rectangle. Boom, now it's in there, now it's connected. Your duck has two borders, one moving and one still. Oh no, no. Yes, we in there. <laughs> Man, listen, yo, Luis, you're right. We should have posts going on in the beta group. Like the reason number 247, why you should always use beta is because it works. <laughs> I mean, it just do, right? It's super do. All right, anyways, let's let's get back to what we was doing before Kurt and Shelly came to mess up everything. Uh, love love the new fetchers in here, though, on the reel, though. Ooh, 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 move that out the way. Love the new features. Let's get rid of Keynote. We not need that. Quit. All right, so next thing we think to do, hit a little screen share, kill this border. Quarter radios, not need. Ecam live beta. Let's go to comments and reactions. Let's go to the comment window, please. All right, so I'm gonna embiggen this real quick. And then I'll make this more logicated so you guys can see in the demi dim how we do this. So I reason why Paul is like Paul and me asking you to hit the Q colons is I can go like that and see that the only person that asked the question was Andy. And Andy wanted to know, what did I use to make 1920 by 180? I didn't, Andy. I went 1920 by 1080. No, I'm joking. It's called window resizer. Uh, where did I get this from? I got it from Chrome. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Yo, you know you got like mad plugins? Yep, it legit is called window resizer. And can you go... Yes. No, not web permission. Can you go to the site or where it comes from? Mm -mm. Chrome Web Store. No. Oh, let's update it, though, while we're here. <laughs> uh, copy that. Go here. Chrome Web Store. Bam. There it is. Window resizer. That's not even the right one. You're stupid. I hate that Chrome. Yeah, this is the one I use. I hate that Chrome lets programs use the same name. It's just super silly. That's silly. But yeah, Andy, that is the answer to your question. So yes, dropping the cue in helps people find the questions. I also could come through and then hit like some, some uh, questions that might have a, um, you know, a favorite type situation to it. Come on to favorites. I can say, Kurt, thank you, Kurt, for the gotta love it message. Appreciate that. Come back, unstar Kurt. 
then it could be like the better is better, <laughs> the beta is better. True story, right? And the the ducks are crispy. They just need some pancakes. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So yes, you can hit favorites, and you can see comments and reactions right there. So you can tell that out of the 26 folks watching this, ain't but six people press the like button, and that is a tad bit rude and depressing both. But yeah, no, I don't care when you press the button or not. Anyway, when someone presses the, the like button, oh, man, remind me to disable my Logitech mouse scroll wheel. Can I tell you that? <laughs> um, so what happens is, I'm gonna show you why I always fight with my mouse, is let me go to the top because it'd be better. So look, I can scroll up and down really quickly with this super fast mouse, right? I really love it, but it rolls in perpetuity. So for instance, if I start to scroll and it move in here, it's still scrolling. <laughs> so that's why it's always broken, right? Cause my mouse is mad quick. You see all those thumbs flying in the air? That's people actually pressing the button. What it do, Bick? Yes, ducks and syrup. Oh my God. Now you guys are gonna have me wanting chicken and waffles. Anyway, so that covers that. La 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 la. Let's get over to the sound levels. Sound levels. And one thing that's cool about this here is you'll notice that I can grab anything that Ecamm can see. So if, if your Mac, sorry, anything your Mac can see, any windows that are visible on your Mac, Ecamm got action. So it's kind of a nice setup. There's my audio levels. Again, you see I have everything set at 80. If I wanted to add, let me shrink this comment window back down to normal. It's just crazy. Gotta have everything perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, if I wanted to add a secondary interface, I could. I can come in here and select something else that I have connected. Uh, this is way the heck over here. This is the Insta360 microphone. Now you guys are hearing me through a little webcam microphone right above my head. So you can hear good sound versus junk. Here we go. That's enough of that. I don't want to hurt anybody's ears listening to that craziness. Do not do that, Bicky. You guys know the musical Tourette's will kick in, and I'll be like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can feel of the cooling. Never mind, stop. <laughs> All right, so I personally never use studio sound or system sound, and that is because my interface is processing that. If you happen to not been paying attention this week to the Ecamm situation, and you didn't see Alejandro's video on like routing your audio. I'm going to tell you, go back and watch it. It is fantastical. Literally one of the dopest things stuff. in the, in the hot minute stuff now, into zoom. Now there is a little caveat with that, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but that's just sort of one There's example video, of audio. You routine. Remember, so that's if you can't click, thing, you got to click uh, the that blue we button. are talking. Okay, Hesham Alejandro. So then you click it back off so you can move it. That, that one thing is probably be the only thing that hic hiccup people. But this video is dope. If you want to learn more about setting your audio, it kind of covers everything. And it it's easier for Americans to learn listening to the British accent. So <laughs> enjoy that. It is a good video. You guys should check it out. Um. Yeah, so this, <clears throat> if you hear doubling on an interview, nine times out of 10, when the guest is talking, this little line right here should be the only thing that's turning green. Your top version should be completely stationary. If the guest is talking and this is moving, that's where your doubling is coming from. You have your interface set up wrong. That's all there is to it. There's nothing more to, nothing more to know than that. It is literally that simple. If the guest says blah, 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 and this, your interface also moves, you have it set wrong. Period. End of story. That's it. 
it's way easier than most folks make it out to be. All right, let's go to the next scene. <clears throat> Man, I, I told Alec to get water. Now I need water. Camera switcher, camera switcher, camera switcher. So you can see here, these are my camera sources I have connected at the moment. It. I have my Ozbot. I have my Insta360 link. I have my cam link over there. I got camo. And then the guest. Ah, sleepy. So, would get it, beat it. Um, if I were to press here, I have all of my settings where I could mess with my camera, do all kind of weird stuff that I don't normally do. Um, if I were to click on this one, it gives me the same thing, same here, right? So I have individual individual adjustments. If I want to grab a camera, I can just drop it on, and then now you can see my gigantic monitor over here. Hey. There you go. What happened? Oh, <laughs> I must have hit the button. There it is. Shaka cam. Right? Um, <clears throat> and if you want to swap that cam out, you just go there, see the overhead. I don't know why it's crooked today. I must have hit it yesterday doing something dumb. Oh, God. It's a pain in the butt to get it back straight, though. That's close enough. So, you can throw shocks that way. <clears throat> this is just way easier than doing it with that little bar across the bottom of the screen. So just trust me on that. Let's go here to camera effects. Whew. So Alec, we're talking to you guys a little bit about that today. He was showing you all the green screen things. Again, if you want to know how to do that, check out Alex's video. He goes into heavy detail as to your green screen. And yeah, it shows why I am always so anti because most people would not spend the time and effort to set it up properly so that it's actually purdy. If you set it up properly, it works. If you don't, it it makes your thing look worse than you think it does. So I will highly suggest to spend a smidgen amount of time to learn how to do it correctly and be gold. And be gold. All right, so there's that. Um, you have your picture settings in here, which will allow you to transmogrify your picture in the manner. Let me do this real quick. So you can increase brightness. You can mess with your color temperature. You can mess with your tint. It's Shrek. Right. You can mess with your saturation. You want to go max headroom. Uh, you can mess with your contrast or gamma. Uh, I normally don't mess with none of those things. I set everything in camera and call it a day. Right? You can mirror pictures. You can set black and white. So here's crazy. You want to see crazy? I'm going to show you crazy. <clears throat> I can duplicate this. I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. So I can duplicate this window. I'm going to set this up as the same camera. Press on camera E. Mirror it. Drop it in the puka. And then go wow, wow, west. Wow, wow, west. So now be like, listen, doc. You bald-headed, slinky monk. See, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you can put individual colors or effects on individual cameras by reassigning the same camera to the same camera and doing that. The other thing you can do is I always feel like somebody's watching me. Um, sorry, Paul. You can also embiggen one. Why, yes. And then you can witness protection one. Ah, uh, so what had happened was 
Well, then the criminal had come in, and I uh, hope you guys blur me out. I don't want to get shot by accident. And then uh, what happened was I said, please come to the sanctuary, and uh, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, you can you can do all kind of cool stuff. So you can multiplicate your camera, like so. You can even do just like a big one and another big one. Be like. You know that meme where the guy with the thick glasses is like. <laughs> so yes, you got you got cool camera effects inside the camera effects box. Tati is like, I came late, and what in the exact frog is going on up in here? <laughs> Sorry, Tots. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah, that dude that covers it. I think we did. We it. did it. I think I we, think did, we it did it all. That's it. That's it. That's it. You guys, you guys got, got questions? questions. Let, Let them rip. rip. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul and Luis, you guys, you guys are up next Friday. Friday. I'll, I'll be, be in, in Osaka. Osaka. Actually, Actually, I'll be in Kyoto. 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 <clears throat> next, next Friday. So, so if, if you, you guys. guys. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah I, I, I accidentally turned on. I was showing people. I forgot to turn it off. Good answer. Ah. La, 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 la. So anyway, I'm just going to sit here for a second wave of questions. And Luis and Paul, are you guys good for Friday? Let me know. If not, we got to call Team ENN. Or maybe we'll just get Tati to do the demo. <laughs> she can do it now. She's, she's been here long enough. Come on, Tots. You can do the demo. I th what do you guys think? We should get one of the regular users to join you and do the demo, and you guys can sit there and moderate. Kurt, are you coming to camp? Oh, I know you're. I know you're coming to camp. You're the only Tati around here, so yeah, you. We're not talking about no one else. Um, yo. Kurt, since you're here, let me show you my, my new friend. Oh, <laughs> Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? See, Tots, all you got to do is call Luis on Friday. And you can join in on all the fun. You can be like, oh, hi, uh, this is Tati. And I'm going to show you how I use Ecamm to uh, educate these children. <laughs> She's going to slap the snot out of me at camp. I'm going to stop messing with her. Uh, yo, I'm telling you, fam, I can't wait for camp. I'm super excited. You guys really don't understand. We have like a month and three days. Or, yeah, that's right. We got a month and three, four days, something like that. So somewhere in the next 35 days. <laughs> Oh my God, Todd's that is too hilarious. Um, yes, it's just like just a little bit. Like we're gonna be all in the same place, and I'm super excited. We have a lot of stuff planned and in store. Um, Katie and and, and Laura, myself, Caleb, uh, Ken and Glenn, and all the people that we can muster to get them to help. Have we just put in a lot of work to pull this off? I am super excited about it. You have no freaking idea. So, can't wait for camp. Oh, look. Look what else we have here. Wow. These are just fantastic. Rode Wireless Pro. I can't wait. You're cleaning and packing right now. Yo, I'm already packed, but I'm packed for Japan. So I got to come back, unpack, and repack. And uh, 
I might have a quick jump to Cali, and then I'm going to unpack and repack and then go back to Bostonian. So it's going to be great. I am super, super stoked about camp. I can't wait. You guys have no freaking idea. Oh, Kurt, since you're here and you're not hip on the new features, before I run, I'm going to teach you something else in the beta you didn't know about because you've been hiding. Watch this right here. I'm going to see this new text box overlay. Boom. Box, we want to put dynamic, shrink to fit, truck, Kate, scroll, and ticker. I'm going to do shrink to fit. Yes, they are, Kirk. Yes, they are. I'm going to grab this information from Alejandro Stream, and then I'm going to paste the kid it up in here, and then press add. And I just made it mad. Where'd all those numbers come from? Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. All of those numbers did something crazy. Sometimes I swear Google can mess up a copy. Like nobody does that except for Google. There we go. there and now let's put the box color you could even do something cool with this oh <laughs> my bad I forgot I switched out um, you could even come over here and instead of filling with the color you can fill it with emotion that's a little bit too fast but you could if you wanted to uh, I would put colors that are closer together. You could fill it with a pixelation box. So everything that's under it is hella pixelated. And then you still can read it, right? You can fill it with a hex color. like I mean, hex boxes like that. Which is just cool. It's just little different ways of doing it. Uh, you can do something weird like that. I would never do that. <laughs> But people are weird. You can just do your nice little gray joan. So let's get two colors that are closer together. You got a nice little fizz aid. And then you can throw the little fade like such. Uh, boom, look at that. Isn't that swanky? Come on, son. Like, yo, now we are in the building, people. I'm telling you. Ecamm is next level. Ecamm is next freaking level. Right? You know what I mean? Like, fools be out here. They don't know. They just don't know. Just like music. Make it smaller. Hit that box. Hit the dynamic. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Let's get a little bit more text margin on the dynamic. Bam. So now, I would tell you people, never... Ever, 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 ever put this much crap in a text box on the screen at once, unless your goal is to not <laughs> let the people actually read it. Oh, this is way better. Right there, a little off the edge. Oh, snap. If you're doing it like a, a, this content is under suggestion of other, these are real products that are not available. This has been not any complications. The claims of where have not been excluded. And these are the tests. Make sure that all purchases are necessary in order to win. And you don't have to be a member of the state, the government, pay all of the taxes. But if you want it to be like that, that's how you do it. Other than that, never put that much text on the screen at one time. Nobody got time for that. Just saying. Enter at your own risk. But that's cool, right? We have come, we have, man, Virginia Slim, we come a long way, baby. You can do some dope things. Here, let's do this. Let's make another text box and let's go. Boom. Make it fat. Then make it clap. Then make it clap. Turn down 
the text margin. So pop out of here. Double click. Text margin. And then edit the text. Nothing after that. Okay, cool. Let's put it on dynamic. Watch this, Kurt. Now you're about to be like Ermagerd. You're about to get Ermagerded. Ermagerd. Okay, let's go to slightly bigger. Does it fit? Ah, oh, it doesn't fit. Back that up. You back that thing up. I wish this, I don't know how hard it is. This probably has to do with trying to keep it gangster for people with, um, you know, lesser displays. I wish that when you made an update here, it also transmogrified to the update live, but I understand why it might not do that. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm going to make it clap. Okay, now I'm going to stop messing with it. Now, all I want to show is that when you go to cut out the text. Oh, God. Yes. Yes, look at that. That, my friends, is cool. I am in this box. <laughs> that is the bomb. So you can do all kind of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can build your um with these kind of cool stuff. You can you can build your own like overlays now. It does make life a little bit easier. You can do so much more overlays directly in Ecamm without having to leave. So to uh, Michael's point, you can come over here, click your little text box. Well, that's nice. Do your overlay like this. Learn how to type, dude. Oh, God, you fat fingers. All right, and then go here. I'll probably go dynamic. Do my 64. Do my... Then hit this. This one, do the same thing. I normally use extra light. And if the other one was 64, we drop this one to 48. This one was 64. Oh, I see. When you do it this way, you're stuck with what you're stuck with. You can't separate them, which is fully acceptable. I would just make it more straight then. So I would go to like this here. Oh, now it worked. Huh. Weird. 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 Are you going to change on me? Yes. Now you're cooking with Pam. Now you're cooking with Pam. Right? Boom. Text color. Orang. Boom. Text color. Blue. Gangster. All right, cool. So now you got this, right? I'm gonna hit add. So then you're just gonna embiggen that just a widge, smallify it just a widge, put it off in the corner just a widge, and then you come here and take the border, hit your little motion game. You know what I'm saying? And then you just got you just got cool with it, or you can hit it with a little gradient action. In which case, I would go from like earns to earns, or that to that. Actually, that to this is better. And then rotate your gradient however you wish. Lord, slide, slide like that looks good. And then, yeah, background. You can get your little motion in there. We're just like twirling a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So you can get in there and just show off. You could come to the barbecue and show out. 
right? So now you take that and you put in your entry, like how you wanted to come in. And actually, I did this as um, a text box, so you can't fly that in just yet. But still, like, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. That transparent is called cutout right here, Migs. You just hit that. You can even throw the opacity a little lighter. Like, you can just get in here. You can do multiply. With, you know, like in Photoshop, overlay is the one you normally would use or you use screen, uh, which is here. If you were trying to do, you know what I mean? So you got styles now. You don't have to take the same generic. If I'm going to do screen, I'm not putting all the rest of this stuff. It would just be the name, right? And then screen the name out. But, I mean, again, it's like Photoshop. You can get in there and, oh, there's my transition. Fly, spin in from the top. And this is going to be stupid. All right, this one's going to be dumb. This one's going to be dumb. Ah! Hey, everybody. Introducing the most irritating person in your life. La la. Silly. <clears throat> Just border design silly. But that's how it works. Overlays for days. You can get in here. You can do all kinds of stuff. So download the beta and play with it. Because what's going to happen is when it runs live, everybody be like, oh, I got all of these things to learn. Right? You'll be like, oh, they just came out with 5,100 new features, and now i got to learn all these new features. No, because if you use the betas, you learn them as they come out, and it's not you just hit with all of them at one time. So, you know, you can use the beta and the regular interchangeably. So, like, if you got something, this is important, I'm scared to use the beta, just use the regular one. But then when you want to play around goofing and practicing, as you should, and use the beta and so you get to learn all the new text box stuff and all the new you know shape overlay stuff all of that you put it in together now don't wait until the last minute when we drop the new version and then be crying about oh ecam had all this stuff and i don't know how to use it i'm just saying you got options you got options these things are called choices people choices anyway i will see you guys after i come back from japan Thank you, Paul, Luis, and Tati <laughs> for holding it down next week. I tried really hard to sucker Glenn into doing it, <laughs> but uh, I don't know what he's doing. So hopefully one of these days I can sucker Glenn into doing the demo, but I appreciate you guys so much. You guys rock. Uh, mata ato day and pasta lasagna. Let's hit the uh, outro scene. Aloha. Yeah.